Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Wow. Thank you, Father. We love you so much. We love you so much, Jesus. And there's many things that we could pursue. We could pursue revival. We could pursue awakening. We could pursue reformation. And all those things are good, Lord God. But, but they have to come after pursuing you, the very person that you are. And we want to thank you, especially today, Father, for sending your Holy Spirit to us. Holy Spirit, you are here, and we honor your presence. We do not ignore you. We honor you, and we love you, and we embrace you, and we ask for fresh infilling today, and that you would breathe on your word today too, Father, that we might be filled with you. In Jesus' name, amen. I want to introduce um, some friends of mine that are here, and if, if uh, Tracy and Natalie, if you could stand, and your family, um, Tracy and Natalie are here from um, Seattle, Tracy and Natalie uh, Armstrong, and uh, they are ministers in the Seattle um, area, also involved in the marketplace, coaching, I mean, just about everything you guys have your hands in, and it's just an honor to have you come and visit us today, and if you could just stand in the presence of the Lord, I just uh, feel um, this uh, word bubbling, because it is like, I see these uh, new doors opening, we were in the green room earlier, talking about, like, when you come up against a wall, um, that is a sign that the last season is finished and it's time to enter a new room, a new sphere, a new realm. And that's what I see over you. It's like you're going to be collecting all the things that God has shown you, revealed to you, the lessons he's taught you, uh, even some of the disciplines that he has, has um, um, initiated in your lives and that and those around you, and you're taking the wisdom of that into the next season, but it's going to be different, and you've known that, and it's been feeling a bit weird for a bit, because you're wondering, well, um, how do I uh, maneuver this, because it's just not the same as it was, and how do we move forward, but it's like, I see this fresh mantle being put on you and all your family, I see a fresh mantle being put on you for this day, I see you... Um, uh, erecting uh, plumb lines, um, and they are coming from the heavens, but you're securing them in the earth so that the Father can have that plumb line of truth in the earth, and you're going to call people to align to it. And so I just bless you um, in this new season with great um, abundance and blessing on your lives and on everything that you put your hands to. Bless you. And um, I just know that that word, that word, I think a number of you th think, you know, that word feels like it could be for me. I wonder if she gave it to the wrong person. And how many of you felt that that word was for you? Put up your hand. Okay, a number of you will take it. Just receive that word, because oftentimes the Father will release a word, and it's and it's for and it's for all that are uh, quickened by it. But I was um, just in my personal quiet time this morning, and the Lord gave me a word for a number of you that have been feeling. Um, without strength lately, without power. You've been feeling powerless. You've been even feeling maybe a bit weak physically. If that's you, I would like you to stand because I'm going to make a decree over you. And if you're watching online, our online family, you can stand wherever you are and just stand in the presence of the Lord and receive this decree. But it's out of Isaiah 40, 29 to 31. And it says, he gives strength. And that word strength there means power, might, human strength, strength of angels, the power of God, and wealth. <laughs> so if you're lacking all those things or any of those things, he says he gives strength to the weary and to him who lacks might. And the word might is vigor, generative power, wealth, and physical strength. So if you lack might, he increases power on you. And that word in the Hebrew means power, strength, might, and abundance. And in verse 30, it says, Though youths grow weary and tired, and vigorous young men stumble badly, yet those who wait, and that word wait means to look for in expectation with great hope, 
eagerly looking for, to linger for, and to entwine and bind together with the Lord. For the Lord will gain new, uh, will, will, will give you new strength. They will mount up with wings like eagles. They will run and not get tired, and they will walk and not become weary. And so I decree and declare that word over you and all of those of our family that are online right now as well, in Jesus' name. And also, something else is prophetic, Shiloh, that you're going to love. One of our web church members, and by the way, if you're watching right now and you're not part of our web church, but you want to be, I'm sure you will want to be because it's amazing. Um, we have an online, official online church that you can join, officially join, where you get assigned uh, your own personal pastor and uh, you get teachings. There's Bible studies, there's prayer meetings, there's prophetic teams, all of that involved in the online church, and I would love to uh, have you in in that uh, part of Shiloh. I would love to cover you and bless you and uh, pastor you. So go on shilohfellowship.com uh, and just click on the uh, web church button, and you can find out more about it. But one of our web church members, uh, Lee, sent this and said um, that they were driving home praying for us, and they saw a map of Arizona and a pin in Maricopa. And they said, I see maps a lot. So they zoomed in and they saw a lightning rod over Shiloh. That's you, okay? <laughs> then a huge supercell, not tornadoes, grew and torrents of pure glowing rain fell all over, making the desert burst into green and flowers. I don't know if deserts do that, but anyhow. <laughs> then the lightning got pulled into the rod and Shiloh lit up glowing. I felt the presence of Holy Spirit huge. And it wasn't just Shiloh. It was like the whole area lit up. Then I saw hundreds or even thousands of broadband icons, like the little icons on your phone when you're connected to the Wi-Fi. They were on fire and swarming all over North and South America, across the oceans and the whole world, starting fires everywhere. I really don't know if this means anything, but I thought I'd share it. <laughs> Oh, thank you so much, Lee. That was an amazing word. I've, I've read it, uh, you know, numbers of times this morning, meditating on it and saying a big yes to God. Amen. He's so good. And uh, make sure that you all come out tonight for wind and fire. It is going to be amazing. We, we just, as we were praying into it, felt like there was going to be an invasion of the Holy Spirit that's just going to blow things open for us and we're just going to meet with him because we're crazy in love with him. So it starts at six o'clock and you can watch it online as well. But today as I was preparing for uh, Pentecost, you know, Pentecost is an amazing feast, isn't it? And um, and uh, one of the biblical feasts of Israel and and we, we just love partaking of it and remembering what happened in the book of Acts on the day of Pentecost. And um, the book of Acts is called the Acts of the Apostle, but it, it should probably be named the Acts of the Holy Spirit because the book is all about what he does through his people in partnership with God's people. But I felt that, um, and you know what? I don't think I've ever done this in a public meeting before. I've done it in Bible studies or, you know, little devotional groups and that. But I just felt I was not not to preach a sermon, but I was to read the scripture and, um, and just unpack it a little bit. So we're going to put it up on the screen. I've kind of mixed in different versions here and there because, you know, you pick out the ones that, you know, come to life to you. So um, this, uh, this, uh, uh, Acts one, um, where the disciple or where the disciples were meeting with Jesus um, before he was taken up, they were on the Mount of Olives. And one day, Shiloh, we're gonna go to Israel together. We tried to go in uh, 2020, but you know, um, COVID came and Israel got locked down. But one day, we will go there, Shiloh, and we will visit Shiloh in Israel, it's uh, my most favorite place there, and you will love the Mount of Olives. It is an amazing place, but it's extremely close to Jerusalem. So when you hear that they go from Mount of Olives to Jerusalem, it's not a big trek. It's like, you know, a few minutes away. But when you're on the Mount of Olives, and it's a hill, um, 
you know, according to me who lives on the West Coast, you know, I grew up in Vancouver, British Columbia. So, you know, some of the mountains, you know, that we see around here even, you know, it's just all perspective, right? <laughs> but anyways, the Mount of Olives, when you're there, you can look over to the beautiful Jerusalem. So that's where they were when um, Jesus was speaking to them. And uh, this was written by Luke, the book. And he says, I write to you again, my dear friend, to give you further details about the life of our Lord Jesus and all the things that he did and taught. Just before he ascended into heaven, Jesus left instructions through the Holy Spirit for the apostles he had chosen. And so Jesus gave the apostles instruction because he was going to be going. And the instruction came by the Holy Spirit. And I feel the Holy Spirit um, highlighting this in that in these coming days, before you make decisions, go to Holy Spirit and get his instruction. Because his instruction for this new season is going to maybe take you in a different direction than you thought you were going to go. And some of the ways that you even did things in the past, if you will wait on him for instruction, he will show you new things. So Jesus was connected to the um, instructions of the Holy Spirit. He received them and gave them to the apostles. After the sufferings of his cross, Jesus appeared alive many times, and um, it's recorded at least 11 times. We know that at least 11 times he met with his um, people to these same apostles over a 40-day period, providing to them with many convincing signs that he had been resurrected. During these encounters, and I felt the Holy Spirit say, believe him for encounters. Because it's one thing having ac academic understanding of the scripture and of Jesus and of the kingdom. You can get it academically, but go after God for the encounters. And what Jesus did is he met with his disciples and they encountered him. It wasn't just um, receiving academic knowledge. They actually encountered him. So during these encounters, he taught them the truths of God's kingdom. And we are going to be more committed to walking in kingdom in these coming days than ever before. And Jesus instructed them, do not leave Jerusalem, but wait. And in some versions it says, tarry here until you receive the gift I told you about, the gift the Father has promised. For John baptized you in water, but in a few days from now you will be baptized in the Holy Spirit. Now, it's interesting is that when Jesus was about ready to go and leave all of his um, people that he had trained and equipped and, and manifest himself to, who had seen his glory, when he was getting ready to leave everything in their hands, um, you'd think he'd give them a massive manual, right? A massive manual on how to do it, at least how to do a church plant, um, how to set up a board of directors, board of elders, whatever, you know, all the things that are so important to so many in this day. But he didn't. He didn't even tell them how to, how to put together a successful outreach. He didn't say, you know, man, you can really win a lot of people to the Lord if you just, you know, throw a pizza party or, or have a fashion show or something. No, he didn't do that. He gave them a position. He gave them a posture. He sent them to pray. They knew what tearing was all about because they had been with Jesus. So they knew what it meant to tarry. They had watched him tarry. They had watched him in Gethsemane. They had seen him go and be with the Father and spend all night with the Father. They knew what that meant. They had been with him. And he said, you have a prophetic promise. And you are to stay and remain focused on that. Remain in prayer until that promise comes, until it is fully manifest. He didn't tell them to go back into the marketplace work. He didn't tell them, you know, just, you know, go back to your families or whatever. He says, no, you go in Jerusalem. The word Jerusalem actually means double peace. Go into the place of that shalom. Go into that place where, where I have done it, where I have finished. Remain in that place of rest until. You're not going to strive in this place for what I've promised you. You're going to receive it in peace. Whoa. We always want to pray from 
from God's promise, not, not, not for it, right? We already have been given it. For John baptized, verse, verse 5, for John baptized you in water, but in a few days from now, you will be baptized in the Holy Spirit. Every time they were gathered together, they asked Jesus, Lord, is it now the time for you to free Israel and restore our kingdom? Isn't that interesting that they have the king of kings in their midst who has been teaching them kingdom? And every single time they spend with him, they bring up the same question about the political situation of the day. They're all focused on the political situation of the day. And he was just not addressing it. They kept asking him and he didn't answer them. He finally answered this. He said, the father is the one who sets the fixed dates and the times of their fulfillment. You are not permitted. You are not permitted to know the timing of all that he has prepared by his own authority. But I promise you this, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and you will be seized with power. And that word um, power there is dunamis. It's a miracle power. It's God's raw power. It's the power of moral excellence. It also means that. If you look it up, study it out, you'll see it. It's a power that comes from wealth. And it's a power that comes from numbers. Like when you have, you know, an army of, of, of 500 might be conquered by an army of 10,000 because there's power in numbers, right? And so that power offers every believer benefits that are amazing. And the word seized with power um, can, can also mean um, that, that, that you seize the power. Okay, so you can be seized by the power, or you can seize the power, okay? And you will be my messengers to Jerusalem throughout Judea, the distant provinces, and even to the remotest parts of the earth. And so when they were questioning about what was going on in the political realm, is this the time you're going to restore, you know, the natural kingdom? Is this going to happen? Is that going to happen? He says, um, you know, we can't even talk about that right now. It's not even relevant right now, even though I know it's really big in your heart and it's really big in the world that you live in. It's actually not relevant right now, but what is and what I will promise you is that the Holy Spirit is going to come upon you and you will be filled with his power. You will be baptized you will be fully immersed in his power and when that happens when his spirit comes upon you you will be bold witnesses of my love and my truth in all the world starting here and you're just going to branch out and you're going to fill the whole earth and that is what is important and I just want to make an application of that for today because in the world everything's changing when you know, just in this last year, especially, we have seen so many changes, and some of them are treacherous changes as far as how families and our nation is going to look in the coming years if we continue to go along that track. I heard um, from someone recently who's done a study on this. I think it was Ruth Hendrickson, actually. And she's done a study on this that, that if you have, like, a plumb line, but you go just 1% off, just 1% off, it won't take long before you're way, 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 way off. So when you look at things in the natural, it's like, yikes. And we can get very anxious about that, but Jesus didn't say go into the place of anxiety and pray about all the stuff that's going on in the world around you right now. Go to the place of double peace and wait for the Holy Spirit because he's all that matters. And when you get empowered by the Holy Spirit and you go out and proclaim the kingdom that I have been instructing you in, then you are going to see results. And that's what matters. The world and its system will probably be as corrupt 2,000 years from now. I'm sure that he said that. (laughs) I'm just projecting. As it is now, but what's important, what's really important is that you know Holy Spirit. 
And they were living in a day when everything was in an upheaval. Everything was a mess, politically, for sure. And not only that, they were being, uh, you know, people in the day, like, they, they wondered what happened to Jesus. He was supposed to be the great Messiah and everything, and then he dies on the cross, and that finishes him. And there was a number of people that saw him after he was raised from the dead, but not everybody saw him. So there was a lot of controversy in that day, especially in religious circles and political circles. But he wasn't moved by it, and we shouldn't be moved by it either. We shouldn't be moved by anything. Right after Jesus spoke those words, the disciples saw him, being lifted up into the sky and disappearing into a cloud. A cloud could be a cloud of glory, the great cloud of witnesses, but he went up into a cloud. As they stared into the sky watching Jesus ascend, two men in white robes suddenly appeared beside them. They told the startled disciples, Galileans, why are you staring up into the sky? Jesus has been taken from you into heaven, but he will come back in the same way that you saw him ascend. So the disciples left the Mount of Olives and returned to Jerusalem. It was about a mile away, less than a mile away. It actually says it right here. Arriving there, they went into a large second floor room to pray. That was the upper room. And when we go to Jerusalem together, we'll go to the place where they believe it is the upper room. It is um, about the size of Shiloh here. <laughs> a little bit smaller, maybe. Yeah, it's a little bit smaller. But they just crammed 120 people into that upper room, and they just hung out there together in the glory, seeking God. I've had such amazing experiences in the upper room in Jerusalem. And some of you have, who have been on the Women on the Front Lines tours and that, you know that in, in, in one particular time, we were in the upper room and you're supposed to be really quiet because they bring a number of tour groups through at the same time. And so you're supposed to be really quiet, but we couldn't help ourselves. It was just like, ah. it was just a bubbling. And so, you know, we were trying to pray in tongues real soft, but it just, you know, it got a little bit too noisy. So, of course, we had to leave. But we got blasted in the Holy Spirit, totally drunk in the Holy Spirit, uh, trying to get down the steps, you know, in one piece. And our bus tour guides, they were um, Jewish, they were not Christians, and we get in to the bus, and they get, you remember this, they get blasted by the Holy Spirit, especially one of them got blasted by the Holy Spirit and started speaking in tongues. <laughs> he was so drunk in the Holy Spirit, he was supposed to be our tour guide, he was supposed to be speaking on the microphone telling us what was next, and he couldn't talk, because every time he tried to talk, only tongues would come out. When he tried to talk, he would just start laughing, and he was drunk in the Holy Spirit. I said, that's the Holy Spirit on you. He says, I know, I know, I know. And so he got filled with Jesus Christ, and... Um, you know, there's many Jewish people that are believers in Jesus. They might keep it quiet because of, of family situations and that, but they, they have become believers within their heart. Wow. So anyways, they went into the upper room, verse four, uh, 14, and all of them were united in prayer, gripped with one passion, interceding night and day. We've been compelled to intercede in this season. I don't know about you, but even at home, I just, I'm compelled throughout the day to just pray in tongues. You know, I don't even know exactly what I'm praying for, but I'm compelled to pray. I'll wake up in the middle of the night and I'm praying. There's something going on. We, we were directed by the Holy Spirit to have 50 days of prayer before Pentecost. It was just like, you know, it was just there. In fact, it, it, almost like the Holy Spirit set it up without our, yeah. our true understanding of it. We didn't plan it. He did. And we've had some amazing prayer meetings, a glory. In, the, in some of those prayer meetings that I've been to have, have been just phenomenal. So that's what they were doing. They were interceding because that's what Jesus gave them. He didn't give them a blueprint for how to build the church. He gave them a prayer meeting. He gave them a prayer meeting so that they could get to know Holy Spirit. And whatever Holy Spirit said, however the cloud was going to lead them, they would follow. 
And that's what God wants to bring us back to as well. We need to humble ourselves before the Lord again and get all this, um, you know, all that man can do out of our head because we're pretty good at that. You know, we get skilled in different areas. We think, I can do that, I can do that, I can make this happen. You know, I took a good marketing class. I can really grow the church big, you know, because of the marketing. And we can get ourselves so inside of that and then divorce ourselves from the Holy Spirit. And this is what Jesus was addressing. He said, just come into this upper room and just tarry there until, until the Spirit comes and empowers you. And don't get all impatient and just go out and start planning. Like that's Peter's MO, right? Oh, it's so good that we're here. I'll just build for you each a tabernacle, you know? We, we just need to wait on him and see what he wants to do. Chapter 2, the coming of the Holy Spirit. And when the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. They were still in the upper room. And suddenly a noise like a violent rushing wind came from heaven and it filled what? It filled the whole house where they were sitting. It filled the whole house. When you seek the Lord... He will fill you. Everyone who's seeking him, everyone in the house will be filled. It filled the whole house. And tongues that looked like fire, notice it wasn't fire, it looked like fire, appeared to them, distributing themselves, and a tongue rested, a tongue of the fire rested upon each one. Jesus came to bring two baptisms. One was a baptism with the Spirit. The other was a baptism with fire. Baptism of the Spirit happened here at Pentecost for the birthing of the church at the beginning of the church age. Guess when the baptism with fire is coming? Because it's never come to the corporate body yet. A number of individuals have felt the fire. They have had visitations of the fire. But on a corporate level, the church has not been baptized with fire yet. It's for the purging of the church at the end of the age to reveal the bride. And when all the dross gets burned up, Jesus said very specifically how that baptism of fire is going to operate. It is actually going to burn up all the dross. Now, we've had little pockets of this in church history, but never on the whole house. Now, when we look at the end times, we're looking at a global house. We're looking at a global move of the Spirit for a baptism of fire. And it could start today. It's going to start at some time in the end times when there is a corporate baptism with fire, where the whole house is filled with that fire that burns up the dross, that burns up all the messy stuff, that burns up the works of the flesh, that burns up all of it. And all of a sudden, it's ta-da, there is the glorious bride shining in all of her glory. We'll go out and see the nations come to the brightness of our rising. It's going to be an amazing uh, time, but we can receive that by faith now. Those tongues rested on them. The reason why I said it wasn't a baptism of fire on the day of Pentecost is because resting upon you is not baptism. Baptism means full immersion. They were fully immersed with the Holy Spirit, but they were not fully immersed with fire. It was just a prophetic sign of what was to come. On the day the church was birthed. Happy birthday, church. Whoa. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. They were all baptized with the Holy Spirit. They were all filled. How many were filled? All. And they all began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them the utterance. It is absolutely, absolutely normal and healthy for every believer to speak in tongues. It is abnormal not to. I remember when I first got born again, I belonged to an Anglican church, and they had what they called the normal service in the morning, and then the charismatic service at night where the tongue talkers went. And the, and the, the evening service was like you didn't talk about it very much. They definitely didn't announce it from the pulpit. You know, It was kind of a hidden group. Because they didn't want to offend anyone. And I started reading the Bible. I thought, well, in the beginning, when the church was birthed, they were all tongue talkers. They were all charismatic. They were all spirit-filled. There wasn't like the spirit-filled group and then the normal group. The spirit-filled group is the normal group. And if you do not speak in tongues, I'm going to get a hold of you today. Because I have faith to see everyone I pray for get released in tongues. 
I have not had anyone yet not speak in tongues that I prayed for. And you might say, well, you don't know me then. I'm a hard nut to crack. Well, so be it, but you will crack. (laughs) Because God wants all of us to speak in tongues. The Spirit gives us the utterance. Now, at that time, there were Jewish worshipers who had immigrated from different lands to live in Jerusalem. And when the people of the city heard the roaring sound, crowds came running to where it was coming from. Whenever revival is poured out, crowds come running. Whoa. Stunned over what was happening because each one could hear the disciples speaking in his or own, her own language. They were coming from all over from Iraq and Turkey, and they were, they were all there, and they're hearing everyone speak in languages of their own tongue, hearing it in their own tongue, but knowing that they never learned those languages. The Spirit was empowering them to speak the language, speaking of the mighty deeds of God. Verse 7, Bewildered, they said to, not, to, to, to one another, aren't these all Galileans? So how is it that we hear them speaking in our own languages? We are northeastern Iranians, northwestern Iranians, Elamites, those from Mesopotamia, Judea, east central Turkey, the coastal areas of the Black Sea, Asia, north central Turkey, southern Turkey. Turkey was very well represented. Egypt, Libyans, who are neighbors of Cyrene, visitors from all the Roman Empire, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs, yet we hear them speaking of the God. God's mighty wonders in our own dialects. And they stood dumbfounded, dumbfounded and astonished, saying to one another, what is this phenomenon? I remember when we were ministering down in in Mexico years ago, um, our interpreter did not show up to the meeting. And I had to speak without an interpreter. And the Holy Spirit said, just speak in tongues. And I did. And people were saying, amen, amen. I had not a clue what I was saying. But they understood it. I didn't even have anyone there that could interpret for me what I was saying. I just knew it was really good. People were at the altar crying, weeping, getting on their knees before God. And I thought, it must have been a really good message. (laughs) But others mocked them and said, they're just drunk on new wine. But Peter stood up with the 11 apostles and shouted to the crowd, listen carefully, my fellow Jews and residents of Jerusalem. He spoke into the whole region, right? You need to clearly understand what's happening here. These people are not drunk like you think they are, for it is only 9 o'clock in the morning. Now, this last week, we had a few of you, a few of you that were at the revival school this week. Yeah, I watched you online. I had to be ministering out in, in Texas for a couple of days of it. And so I couldn't be here in person. But yeah, yeah. You know, just maybe someone starting with a name, uh, 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 Andy. <laughs> maybe someone called Maria. Maybe some others of you. <laughs> they were still drunk the next day, Okay. That's the true drunkenness. That's the true wine of the spirit. That's what we go after, not the counterfeit. We go after the real meal deal, right? This is the fulfillment of what was prophesied through the prophet Joel. For God says, this is what I will do in the last days. I will pour out my spirit on everybody and cause your sons and daughters to prophesy. And your young men will see visions. Your old men will experience dreams from God. The older you get, the more dreams you have been experiencing that because you can just be at rest and just okay I'll take a little nap here you get a dream from God it's so easy the Holy Spirit will come upon all my servants men and women alike and they will prophesy and I will reveal startling signs and wonders in the sky above and mighty miracles on the earth below blood and fire and pillars of smoke will appear for the sun will be turned dark and the moon blood red before the great and awesome appearance of the day of the Lord but Everyone, say everyone, everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Amen. Isn't that a good portion of scripture? Isn't it awesome to read the word? I want to encourage you, read the word every single day. Like, you know, try to read a few chapters if you can, but if not, at least a few verses. Just just make it a priority. Do you know that when you read the word a lot, it cleanses the mind? 
And it can actually heal of mental illness because it renews the mind by the washing of the water of the word. And you can actually put it on, you know, just find it on YouTube and play it all day. But read that word and you'll gain revelation and insight for uh, life. I just want to encourage you to do that. This is good word. You read the word every day and you'll get filled every single day. And then when it gets poured out, the spirit will turn it into the wine of the kingdom that will, will uh, fuel people's lives with every good thing. Amen. Are you expectant? Are you expecting for God to move in your life in powerful ways in these coming days? Are you excited about the coming outpouring of the Spirit that's going to bring massive souls into the kingdom? We're already seeing it. We're already seeing more and more and more souls coming into the kingdom. They're hungry. And you think, wow, the way the world is out there with so many anti-biblical principles being embraced, you wonder how are they going to come in? They just do. Because when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, you think differently. Everything changes. When he walks into the room, everything changes. When he walks into a life, everything changes. And we've seen people, even in restaurants, as you reach out to them, just say, can I pray for you? And all of a sudden they start crying. The Spirit comes upon them. You could tell them anything, anything in the truth, and they would believe it. You can just see it on them. They're, they're being transformed all we have to do is reach out to them because there's a hunger. They know that they're confused. Everything that's anti-biblical, people might in their brain think, well, I guess I could buy into that track. I got a little neural pathway that's been formed to house that one. But in your spirit, you know. Your brain might say one thing, but your heart knows another. You know that you're not at peace. You know that there's, there's one, who, one alone who can fill you. And so we thank you, Jesus, for this hour that we've come to. And Lord, we ask for a fresh infilling of the Holy Spirit. We ask for a fresh infilling of the Holy Spirit right now, Lord God, that you would fill us to overflowing. Fill us to overflowing, Lord God, that we be set apart afresh and that we would continue to be in your presence and, 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 and pray and connect with you and be empowered by Holy Spirit moment by moment, day after day. And Lord, that you would prepare us to stand in this hour for what's ahead. And if you're in this room right now and you do not know Jesus, or if you're watching online and you do not know Jesus as your personal Savior and Lord, he is here today and he has you here in this room or watching online. He's appointed you to hear this message because he loves you. And he wants to fill you. And he wants to make you new. He wants to cleanse you. He wants to give you a brand new life, completely clean from all the junk that harmed you in the past. He wants to bring you into his kingdom. And there's only one way you can come. There's not multiple ways in. There just isn't. I know many people will tell you that. But there are not multiple ways in. There is one way. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father except by me, only by him. It says in the book of Acts that, that there is one name under heaven by which man can be saved. And it's not Buddha. You know, it's not any Hindu god or, you know, it's not um, any, anything else, anyone else. It's only him, only his name, only by the name of Jesus. So if you'd like to receive him as your savior right now, you just call on his name. It says, all that call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. You'll be brought into the kingdom and say, Jesus, I invite you to come into my heart and be my savior and my Lord. Forgive me of all my sin. I turn to you. I invite you to do a work in me by your grace and by your love that brings me into the expression of your kingdom that you always had for me. I receive you, Jesus. Amen. And when you, when you pray that prayer with sincerity, he takes you seriously. And he comes in 
and he establishes his presence in you forever. Your name is written in the book of life in heaven. You become the father's son, the father's daughter. You become his very own. And so we celebrate those who came in. If you did come to know the Lord today and you're in the service today, if you would come and see us because we uh, want to pray with you, we have some material to give to you. And, and, and if you're watching online, email Jesus at patriciaking.com jesus at patriciaking.com and we have some materials to give to you we want to pray for you and connect with you and you can also go on findingjesus.me as well for some some good follow-up on what you did today to help you get started in your journey with the lord how many of you in this room want to pray in tongues that you have not prayed in tongues ever but you want to pray in tongues if that's you put up your hand anyone in this room they're not praying in tongues, but you want to. Wow. They're all praying in tongues. That's amazing. That's... Shoot. <laughs> Next time, bring someone that doesn't. Oh, there's someone. We found someone. Okay. Okay. <laughs> if you want to pray in tongues, you just, you just come to me because I'm, I'm going to um, I'm gonna get you. Okay. <laughs> Amen. Lord, just give our whole body a greater portion of your spirit, Lord. We're so hungry for you. We're so in love with you. <laughs> We're so crazy in love with you. We can't even stand it. But give us a greater capacity to love you, Lord God, and fill us more and more and more with you. We receive. Amen.